Great. Well, we did hit the hour, and I want to respect uh, the time for Jerry to have his practices. Um, so before you begin, Jerry, let's just do a brief um, logistics uh, information for everyone. Hi, and welcome <laughs> to the 11 a.m. Pacific time, 2 p.m. Eastern time, and I think it's around 8 p.m. in Egypt for Sophie. So we really appreciate Sophie joining us again from so far away. Uh, luckily, Zoom can bring us together in just a click. Um, but welcome to this workshop on open educational practices by Jerry Hanley, the director and uh, founder and uh, the father of Merlot, uh, the multimedia and educational resources and learning objects for teaching. Did I get it right, Jerry? Close enough, Kevin. Close, Close enough. I was doing it from memory. So um, <laughs> I also want to let everybody know that um, you, some of you may have heard this in the last session, but um, this week, week two of our four-week adventure for the virtual meeting for ABLE, we launched a Slack channel. If you're familiar with Slack in your work world, it's a communication channel that allows you to um, interact with others asynchronously. It's a little bit like a comment uh, feed for social media, but it's pretty much restricted to text and maybe graphics and links. Um, but it's, <clears throat> it's where we are going to stay in touch in between these live um, sessions. And uh, we also will be announcing maybe again at the end that we are going to do something called the ABLE Shark Tank, which is an opportunity for all of you to pitch some ideas related to ePortfolios and get feedback from uh, the Shark Tank uh, veterans. And so um, we'll be putting more information about that out via email, probably at the beginning of next week. Um, but I wanted to make sure that you all knew that was coming. When I stop talking, I'll put the link to join the Slack channel in the chat. And uh, I'm gonna hand it over to Tracy Penny Light, the president of ABLE to say hello before we um, have Jerry give, start us off. Thanks, Kevin. Well, you keep forgetting to mention the most important thing about the Shark Tank is that there are prizes available. So, you know, not only could you get feedback on your great idea for the fall, but you can also win prizes. So, I don't know. I feel like that's just the perfect combination. Um, and yeah, we're just so thrilled to have Jerry Hanley here. Um, like Kevin, I think I've known Jerry for about 20 years and, um, and was um, part of the um, early group of, of members of Merlot who worked on an editorial board to kind of get great learning resources that were open and freely available for, for folks across the disciplines. And so, um, as I was saying to Jerry um, in an earlier conversation, you know, for me, it was a real formative part of my own development as somebody who works in this space. And so I'm, I'm just thrilled that we've reconnected and we're reinvigorating our, our partnership and collaboration with Merlot to really leverage the great work that they do with the, the work that we do at ABLE. So um, Jerry is the executive director of Merlot, as Kevin said, and um, basically a guru of, of open educational practice. So I'll just go ahead and turn it over to you, Jerry. We're thrilled to have you here. Welcome. Oh, th thank you, Tracy, and, and everyone here. Great to meet you. Uh, it would be great if we were in person, but virtual is just as good, especially when we get to work with Sophie, who's really on the other side of the world there with us. So it's great to have uh, all you connected here. Um, I'll begin with uh, a motto that has become my mantra, and that is uh, give a gift and not a burden. And, um, and, and that's what I look at these opportunities where I get to meet new people, connect with, uh, I won't say old people, yes, we are getting old, but uh, long-term friends. Um, and, uh, and, and now to give a gift, um, and, and you might have had this experience sometime at a birthday where some person who you really don't know gives you a gift and then you open it up and you say, what were they thinking about, right? Do they know me, right? And, and they say, oh, don't, don't worry. The gift receipt's in the box, right? And now you say, oh, so now you just gave me a burden, right? Now, because now I got to go return it and figure out what I'm going to do, right? So, uh, you know, when it comes to 
giving gifts, it's really important to understand what the person needs, what they want. So I thought I'd just get started off with, you folks just want to put in the chat, there must have been some reason why you, you came today's session to try to find out something that, that there's a need or an interest or you're, have, you're curious about something. Because I, what I want to be is a little bit of a gift registry, right? Think about where you tell me, what do you need? What would you like? And I'll make sure I target those things when I talk about open educational practices and OER. So if you don't mind, just in the, in the comment, in the uh, chat box, just, just type in a few things or one thing that you want to make sure I focus in on. Um, while you do, and I'll just you know, give everyone a minute just to you know, think about that and, and put something in for me there. All right. Great, 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 great. All right. Oh, thank you. This is terrific. All right. Yep. Um, and I'll, I'll just begin with uh, um, the last one real quick, just so everyone knows, is that the Connect at, at ABLE is about 38% of the, of the members of Merlot are students, right? So, so just so you know, this is a resource, not only for faculty, and, and, but as well as for students. So let, let, me, let me get to, uh, I'll start the presentation. There are a number of people who want some general information. So I'll, I'll do a little bit of, um, overview and then we'll what i'll do is uh, i have a few slides um and then we'll go into the website and uh we can do um kind of a play along where you can also explore while i'm showing you stuff and then we'll kind of do some q a and i'll highlight what's new in merlot and a lot of this is going to be around this emphasis about practices but we got some new stuff um, about authoring tools and things like that i can show you too as well and, um, and how to best leverage Merlot for, for e-portfolios. Great, I, we'll, we'll emphasize that. All right, so let me do the old screen share. And let me just pull up the... Okay, and, and um, I'll send you this, uh, the PowerPoint, if you want to upload it or distribute it or whatever like that, you know, in addition to the recording and things like that. So, you know, I, I always like to start off with a question really is, how do we help people create the e-portfolios effectively, efficiently, and in ways that not only is good for them, but really is good for other people that they can then reuse these materials? Because I think the value of capturing someone's expertise and their accomplishments is and sharing them is that they become models for other people to kind of explore their own strategies so so when we look at e-portfolios as really capturing what's unique about what that person has accomplished and the qualities of, of what they've done and and that uniqueness how does open educational resources fit into that aspect because if you think about open educational resources it's like what's the other stuff that people have right all these online materials but what's important about it is that open educational resources have the five r's and this is something that uh, david wiley has really emphasized a lot Ed, is yes it's free available for you to use free of cost but you have the freedom to reuse it revise it and i think these two next ones revise and redistribute uh, revise remix and redistribute and retain it means i can leverage what other people have done and change it to create a derivative work 
that represents my contributions to a community's effort, right? We do this in scholarship all the time when we write articles, we read and reference other people's materials, and then they become part of, in a sense, our portfolio of a story we're telling with our articles. Well, when it comes to instructional materials, if I'm creating a teaching e-portfolio, connecting with other people and being able, the freedom to reuse, remix, revise, redistribute, retain those materials for educational purposes is important. So if part of creating e-portfolios is how do I really connect what I'm uniquely contributing through my efforts and leveraging a community of expertise, OER becomes a really useful um, means by which you can then create that unique aspect of, of who I am and leveraging other people's work. So I, I, I hope that's in, in kind of making the connection between e-portfolios and OER, I think there's a real nice um, intersection that, that we can really support each other because then the e-portfolios capturing, you know, uh, on a teaching e-portfolio, you know, my strategies, the, the know-how of how I'm going to use technology in when I'm teaching chemistry or physics or anthropology or whatever, right, can really be helpful for other people who are teaching the same course, right? How many people are teaching general education, you know, psych one, psych, psychology 100, I'm a psychology professor, right? The, the similarity and do we always have to reinvent all those processes? So, so the, the whole idea is if we can use open education resources, right, by providing free access to all these materials, and, and the, the next part is around not only people talk a lot, a lot about open education resources, you know, where can I get a free textbook so I can reduce the cost of uh, education for our students, because that's a huge issue. Where can I find the tutorials, presentation, and, you know, all this stuff right, the resources are out there. But I, what, what I'll also say is you have to provide also sharing that know-how of, so those are the practices of how I teach, the expl explanations, how do I implement the delivery and assessment of education, making those open for sharing is also important. So what, what I'm going to do now is um, uh, I'm going to get out of the, the, the um, PowerPoint and now we'll just go through, since people want to know a little bit about what's new in Merlot and stuff like that. Um, I'll highlight a few things. The first is, um, you know, one of the issues that um, people have talked about um, uh, on the research of using open education resources is that faculty say, you know what, I'm not sure how to find them. So, um, so what I'm doing here in the keyword search, I just typed in DNA and I do that because it's hard for me to screw up on typing in correctly. Um, so what Merlot has is again, a collection of materials and, um, and, and they are in organized by discipline. So you can see on the left hand side here, even though I typed in DNA, there's DNA, an art, there's a resource in the arts, four of DNA in business, in education, humanities. Obviously, most of them are in science and technology, but you got stuff in social sciences and workforce development, right? So, so partly what um, Merlot, when you look for stuff, you also can begin to contextualize it within the disciplines that you're looking for. And then here, this is, I think, the value of materials within the uh, Merlot. It also tells you about the type of materials. Is this an animation? Or if I'm looking for a activity-based learning, then I may want to just say, what are just the simulations that really engage students in kind of asking a question, having a hypothesis, trying things out, Right, so if I'm looking for resources, I can also down, select, filter down to the pedagogical strategies that, that, that are important for me. 
or from a student's perspective, I might say, you know, I don't get the language, right? I'm reading it, but what I need is I need some animations. I need some visualizations. Um, and so I, I might just want to click on, let me find the animations that, 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 that will help me find things, okay? And then if I say, okay, I'm looking for an animation, then in Merlot, what we have is you can realize, remember Merlot is a library catalog and all the stuff is stored around servers around the world, right? We just help you discover it easily. And so I can go to the material. I'll do that in a second. And it also provides opportunities for people to do, share their quality uh, evaluations. We have editorial boards. We have about two dozen editorial boards against different areas. Users can write collections. People can write comments. And the other thing in Merlot too, if you find a material that you like, we can also share with you to say, oh, people who like that would view that one also view this one. It's like you're shopping, right? Oh, people who bought this pair of shoes also like these pair of socks, right? And other materials related to. So again, how do we help the discovery of content so that um, we can save you time, we give you the gift of your time by finding resources that you can bring in to meet the unique needs uh, that, that you have. So, so is, is, is this, a, and here's some comments, da da da, um, along these things. So is that helpful folks, just giving you a little bit of kind of the Merlot side of, of stuff? And feel free to thumbs up, um, jump on, comment, whatever. Now, Merlot doesn't have everything, okay? And actually, let me make sure um, I respond to your comments too. Okay. If there's anything in chat, one sec. Let me just. All right, oh, okay. All right, great. Um, now, one of the things, well, this is a relatively new thing in Merlot. Um, we also search over 75 other open and free libraries of material, right? So if you think of this as a one-stop shop from here is something answer, it's another open library. And now here are 19 materials about DNA that I've gotten from AMSER. Or if I want to look at, I'm just, you know, here, these are all the libraries. Oh, here's, here's some MOOCs, edX. Here are a hundred MOOCs in edX that are related to this, right? Or if I want to say, I want to go to something else. And, and, and th this is in part, what we're trying to do is how do we make your life a bit easier? Or I go to OER Commons. So here are all the materials. And if you notice like each one, I was able to produce a hundred of these materials in each collection. So literally with Merlot's search of not only its own collection of over 90,000 materials, but searching all these other collections, you will find materials related to whatever you put in that search box. Because the other thing we've done is we've also created a special Google search heuristic to find educationally related materials to float up to the top, right? So in this case, um, I'll just pick one here. Um, you know, if you typed in DNA into Google, you'd get 23 and me and, um, and the um, paternity suits from the latest celebrity, right? Now, those, you know, and the stuff that we want as educators are going to be down the list. So when, when you have something like this, this is um, a resource uh, from uh, Cold Spring Harbor Labs, right? I say I go to the material just to show how easy it is. So this is the go to the materials. Now the Cold Spring Harbor Lab is like world renowned 
um, uh, laboratory. Uh, I think Crick was one of the researchers there. And so now here's an easy way that I've used Merlot not only to find what's in Merlot that people have cataloged and reviewed and comment and organize and metadata stuff like that, but an ability to find just about anything else. And for not only for I'll call them teaching portfolios for faculty to help pull things together, but often students who are looking for alternative resources from a UDL perspective to enable them to find materials that are useful. Merlot is there for them as well. And if you noticed, when we went to Merlot, I didn't have to sign in, I didn't have to pay anything. It's open and free for everyone to use. So, so there's a little kind of uh, review of, about Merlot's discovery capabilities. And let me just see, uh, any questions about that? You know, was that helpful just to have a quick thing about finding stuff? Oh, and um, let, let me just show you this. So, um, and Sophia, I, I see you there. So if you want Merlot in any one of about 70 languages, uh, we can turn Merlot into, if you want Icelandic, Oh, hang on. We have a little Google Translator here. Let me just make sure it's working. Let's try Greek. Hang on. Or check. Let me just pick one. I'm not sure why. Just so you know, normally it works, <laughs> and I'm just trying to. I'll, I'll figure out what, why it's not working now. But we have the Google Translate uh, work, work, works on this. It's just, and and I, as always, I always try things out before I go um, play things and do demos. And let's just try one more time. Yet it's not working because I'm giving a presentation. That's exactly right. Okay, so sorry about that. Um, well, well, I'll figure that one out. Now, uh, the other thing, what I want to show you too, and I'll just quickly go back. Oh, sorry. Go back to another uh, screen share again. So Merlot has a lot of academic materials. And um, so th there's lots of materials that, that are available from the uh, open education resources that we have and also uh, other libraries in the Google app. And we also have materials that are organized by um, different disciplines in various ways. So we, we kind of covered this. Now, the other thing um, that we have is a, we, it's a, I'll call it a, a sister open educational resource. And this is materials related to workforce development. And uh, has, has anybody heard of Skills Commons? So I'm gonna show you. So this real quick is um, the US Department of Labor uh, funded $1.9 billion to 700 community colleges to create open education resources related to workforce development. And, uh, and after they gave out the money, they said, oh, um, and every, all the materials had to have a Creative Commons license on it. So they said, well, how's anybody gonna find this stuff? So I got a call to saying, hey, Jerry, can you, Put together a library of all these resources and so here I'm just going to give you a quick sense of if you're looking for materials in workforce development in manufacturing um, and you want about metal how do you produce screws and nuts or about primary metal manufacturing or healthcare in hospitals or professional services 
IT, educational services, um, what else we have even here, auto repair, um, mining, uh, quarrying, construction, all these and all you have to do is just kind of click on the topic that you're interested in. And here is 396 materials in machining manufacturing. And if you want to look for materials that I might want to say, what are some tutorials that I might want to add? Or can I find an online course in machining manufacturing? Again, you can narrow it to the type of materials. I go to, here's a manufacturing skills certificate program, some workshop. And here are, right here, downloadable materials that you can then use, reuse, revise for your want. So I want something about principles of manufacturing processes. Here's a seven megabyte file. You just click on it and, it, and it'll download for you. So I just wanted to highlight um, skills commons there to say not only students might be looking for academic stuff and faculty, but in the community colleges, especially when it comes to um, uh, workforce development resources, uh, we, we have all these materials in Skills Commons free and available for you. Okay, so, so that was kind of a little review about OER. Um, any questions before I go on to the issue of open educational practices? All right, just checking to see anything in chat. Nope. Okay. All right. And if you want to just give me a thumbs up on going forward to practices, we'll, we'll hit that one up. All right. Okay. All right, so let's go play. And, and um, again, uh, everyone, this is a play shop. So um, hopefully I'm just giving you a little bit of a, a quick docent's tour of the resources. Um, and now I'll just go into a little bit more detail here. So as I mentioned earlier, open educational practices are more about the how-to of using technology and teaching and learning, transforming the way I'm teaching in a whole variety of ways. And so what, what, I've, what we've done here between Merlot and Skills Commons is try to organize materials on the how-to and realizing sharing these practices through e-portfolios is um, a very important and uh, easy way of doing this. And so um, let me jump to examples right away here, is in the Cal State University system, um, for example, we had a project, I used to be the Assistant Vice Chancellor for Academic Technology. So um, we had to um, really help faculty transform the way they're teaching to improve student success. And, uh, and one of the things we did is we said, okay, if you're, as you're gonna change the course, what we also want you to do is tell your story so other faculty who are teaching those courses can learn from your transformational process. So that required them to develop their teaching e-portfolio for how they change the materials. And so we organized them by discipline. And, uh, and let me, I'll just show you and I'll just pick one at the top here, just. All right, so this is a case where we had, um, so Adam Glezier from Cal State Fullerton, he wanted to create a flipped version of Calculus II so we created a template for them to say, tell me about, give me some background about why you wanted to redesign the course. So here, this is that faculty member's voice of why he wanted to do it. What about his students and the challenges that he has and the advice that he gives? What is it about, how does it align with, student, with the student learning outcomes? A little bit about myself, right? And again, as an open educational practice, you'll see here's the Creative Commons license there. Okay. 
Um, then, then, he's, then he says, well, how did what, my planning, what did I do? How did I implement it? And then begin to looking at some of the results um, that, 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 that he had here. And what are some of the findings so to begin to share what's the impact that, 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 that he had on, uh, on the grade distributions for his students and stuff along those lines, okay? So, and, and if you, um, you know, you, you look at here, it looks like they've, grades have improved, right? Um, and, uh, and this is, again, a, an ability for um, faculty to tell their story about how they redesign calculus. And, and not only with the resources, but also the how-to. And, uh, and you think about how many faculty have taught Calc 2. And yet we often don't share those practices. So, so that, that's you know, uh, one example uh, that, that we have here. Oh, clicked on the wrong one. Hang on. Um, now, what, now that ePortfolio that was created, and there's lots of others, so you can see, and I'll just click on it just so you get a quick uh, view of this is. Um, so here's another one. And if you notice that, that there's a similar design to this, because what we did is we created these templates within Merlot, and it's, so it's a free and open platform for creating ePortfolios, and I'll show you that just in a second, so that that didn't become a barrier for, for faculty, and we provided them scaffolding questions. And I'll, I'll show you how we do this, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some other ePortfolios that helped us uh, capture the how-to uh, for, for this. So um, we have another program called Affordable Learning Solutions. Uh, and reducing the cost of your course content is an important element for student success. And, and I'll just organize, we organize these by disciplines as well. So if I'm teaching, we have math here. And now if I'm teaching a statistics course, right? So faculty to tell their story about how do I use this open textbook in my course? Here's another ePortfolio. And we've structured this to say, what book are you using? Tell me about your course. What are the prerequisites? Um, what, are you, what are you trying to do? And they include their syllabus, some assignments, some rubrics. So sharing the actual means by which they're delivering that course. So if I'm teaching STAT, I can say, ah, am I, do I have the similar learning outcomes as um, the person who I'm looking for here, uh, as, as Julie here, right? So in getting people to adopt free and open resources to change from the traditional print textbook to something free, having the faculty voice tell their story, again, was an important element. And we have in the course redesign, we have over 700 faculty stories in affordable learning. We have over 100 stories of, uh, of faculty um, telling their story about using open education resources. Is this helpful, folks? I, I see a few head nods. Um, hopefully it's not falling asleep, but okay. Um, when it comes to career and technical education, um, one of the things we worked on with, with this project is really um, helping people tell stories about their strategies. And in this case, um, what we have is um, we, we, we've create, we talk to people about their areas of how do you align workforce development with industry needs? And so this is where we did kind of structured interviews and, and we call, you know, really this is like a video gallery of telling stories about how did we connect with um, our industry sectors in Missouri, and this one's in uh, Utah or Ohio. So, and, and we, we had a series of structured questions 
and then we tie it to their toolkit that they use to implement this and all the resources that's in the Skills Commons collection. So again, think of these as these are can really be more institutional e-portfolios that are telling not just how I'm teaching a course, but how I'm delivering a program across different disciplines. All right. And um, so, so we have those and student and you know we have we have those um, kind of stories and we created also um, a uh, a group of people who who said okay how do you go about telling a story and we so we have samples here um, we we've created um, rubrics here are other um, so you can see stories, you can incorporate some of these as well, and, um, and, and how to tell your story. Uh, we've actually created a storytelling rubric uh, that is really tied to career and technical education. Okay. So is that helpful on the career and technical ed stuff? And I'll just show you some other stuff. Um, let me just go back to virtual labs. Um, I'll say this is another element here. Um, with COVID, your wet labs in the sciences are closed down. How do you teach them? How do you provide them? Uh, have faculty learn to use technology to develop some of those same skills and. Again, I'll, I'll just pick one here is we're in chemistry. And so here's um, a e-portfolio for how a faculty member has adopted a virtual chemistry lab into the way they're teaching. All right. So again, this is tell, helping tell the stories and all these elements. So what's in the bold there, those are all already built into the template that guide people to help tell the story in a consistent way. So if you're a chemistry faculty member and you go to a collection, you're going to see really a, a systemic capturing of those stories. And we also uh, had videos where we asked faculty to actually tell their story um, themselves, not just in a written term where you have their voice involved in here too. Okay. So let, let me, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop there uh, in kind of doing the uh, demos and um, of, of what we have on the site. And what I'm going to show you next is um, how you could adopt those templates and customize them, rebrand them um, with Merlot, because this is another um, tool that is freely available and we've upgraded th this tool. It's called Merlot Content Builder. And uh, again, this is free and open. You do have to register as a member. And, um, but again, it's, it's free to do. And, uh, and what you can do here is um, we have templates. So here's the virtual labs laboratory with technology. Um, we have using open educational practices. Uh, we have stuff about using uh, OER textbooks, course redesign, and quality assurance. So all these templates and what I'm going to do is just say, oh, I pick one out. I pick on I want to do a virtual labs. I then create my own name. I'm just putting junk in there. And then what it does, it opens up to the template. And it basically tells you kind of fill in the blanks, ask your, you know, answer these questions, why you're doing it, describe the, the reasons why there's high enrollment and low success. Tell me about your students. So, and, and all these, if you don't like these questions, it's really easy. You go in and you say, 
Uh, I don't like those questions. I'm going to delete them and type blah, 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 whatever you want. You simply exit it. And then there's your own uh, template that you can give out to people within your institution. You can go change, just so you know, you can go change the logo, take out Cal State. All right, I can simply delete, the, remove the banner image. Now it's gone. And then you can say, oh, I want to add a banner image. Put your own institution in, in there. And now you have your own um, branded e-portfolio that leverages other people's stuff. So the, what I'm, the emphasis here is not only are the e-portfolios with all their content reusable, but the template that allows you to recreate these type of things with your own branding and with your own purpose is also can save you lots of time so that people have to just go in and kind of type what they know. And, and I'll, I'll say the, the ability to scale using ePortfolios was a big question I had when I started the course redesign project. And so when we had 700 faculty members develop their ePortfolios, um, and yes, it was a quote requirement, but you know, faculty find lots of ways to get around requirements, right? Um, that, uh, um, that we were able to produce those and the quality was pretty good you know, across all the disciplines and across all the, the time that we did it. So, so that, that I think is, can be helpful to understand using some of these templates and the support strategies uh, is helpful in capturing the know-how. And then what this really then does is help other faculty who didn't go through that process learn from their colleagues directly rather than having to go through some sort of administrative process all the time. So, so I, I hope again, that that's helpful there. Um, I wanna make sure I have time for questions and answers um, and, and really have time for you to play, try th some things out and, uh, and then be able to you know, uh, ask me questions and help you be on the way because all this are things you can use right now. Nothing I showed you um uh is uh you know is just a powerpoint slide okay um penny's question are e-portfolios reviewed at all okay um now uh it it depends upon the purpose and the context okay uh in our course redesign ones those actual we had communities of practice in the discipline that the faculty shared those and then commented on them so you have that right now when you can catalog all these in merlot too as well right and then you have the broader community to be able to comment there's stuff you can you know put them in your own you call them bookmark collections there's lots of stuff you can do where you have a community of people sharing it so 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 the reviews um, I, and I think our, uh, and, and there's two elements of reviews. It's in the production side, how you have a community help people created in the, in the development as compared to, you know, the, the post production where it's the, you know, uh, the book review after it's been published, someone makes a comment about it. So Merlot is good for the, uh, the after production and the community working with them is really good for the pre-production side of things. So, how's that? Oh, great! And and feel free if uh, the the other thing is if um, if you need anything uh, unique uh, for your own institution, you know. Let, let let me just show you one other thing. Sorry, not, now that you're. You got me going here. Um, let me go to, um, no, sorry. One of the other um, OERs we created was um, how do you support people um, 
uh, institution moving to online. So what we did is we created a template of preparing teachers and learners to go online. This is also built in Merlot Content Builder, right? And, uh, and we kind of curated some materials um, about what you can provide your faculty um, to help them move online. So your OLC's faculty playbook, really good. Here's some simple little mini courses, self-paced, virtual labs, stuff like that. Um, stuff for students, um, a little tutorial from uh, California Community Colleges to help students get ready to learn online, right? Now, so we pulled all this stuff together and because these are open education resources, we built one for Bethune Cookman and then Dillard says, oh, I like that. And so what do you do? You change the color, you put their logo in, and now they have it, and then they can then modify it for their particular needs. And what we're finding is that there are so many common needs around what do I, how do I help my students learn online? Well, you know, this little tutorial, or we have something, um, we're working with Guru and there's a competency-based model for learning online, learning in college readiness, or, um, or there's ways of how do I get my student leaders to become advocates for o OER. So there's a whole program by BC Campus that's put this together, right? So, and, and those are, I think, the value of open educational practices captured in, in e-portfolios is recognizing just the common needs that cross institutions, faculty, staff, and students, that we can share those practices on how to do teaching and learning better uh, through e-portfolios. And, um, and, and we've had, uh, you know, I think I've, I've built about 24 of these portals for, um, and uh, from technical colleges, community colleges, departments, K-12, um, and uh, uh, workforce development alliances, stuff like that. So, um, and, and these are available if you want one, you know, uh, just email me and it takes me about 15 minutes to put one together for you. All right, now I'll, I'll really stop yapping and, uh, and answer questions, comments, and we just have a few people, so feel free to, if you wanna go off mic and ask questions directly, I'm happy to answer questions. Hi, Jerry. Um, Hi, Roberta. Uh, I'm Robert. from the University of Buffalo and I'm ah. of the SUNY system. Yep. And thank you for all of the work over many years um, for, for um, Merlot. I was uh, happy to see that um, as I log in, I now see an um, icon that says resources from the SUNY institution. Yeah. Um, that's great um it didn't work for me so i'd love to see that in action um oh, okay so can right, you, thanks. that that's a really good thing to have um great yeah and you know that, that's the value of partners is we can do some custom um discovery um by knowing who you are then helps us identify what other stuff is related to you And well, I'll get that fixed, Robin. Thank, thank you for uh, pointing that out. And I, maybe I'll make a comment around this. You know, we got tons of stuff going on, and um, yep. there's about if I had to say, there's like five people behind the curtain making all this work, right? So, um, so how how do we keep you know the show going, right? It's people like you who say, hey. This isn't working and then we go okay let's put this on our list we got to fix this because something's wrong and da 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 so 
that that's really the the community is is um, just a huge resource for us in, in in helping us keep all this going. And uh, can you also talk a little bit? You said um, so much percentage was uh, student members. Can you explain that? How are they actually interacting, and what are they contributing? Sure. Yeah. So let's um, let's show you how you do this. So so you can all. All right. So one of the things. Um, You know, you, you can do is um, advanced search members. So you say, I just want to see the students. Okay. Are you sharing with us something? Oh, oh. thank you. Thank you. All right. I'll let, let me go back to the beginning here. Okay. So here's Merlot. Now, advanced search, so just you know what this ISBN, if you type an ISBN number of a textbook into Merlot, we'll identify the book and then we'll give you all the free materials that are related to that subject matter in that book, okay? But I could also advance search materials and then we have members. So if you click on members and I can say, what are all the students, right? And just so you know, and there are lots of other, who are the librarians, administrators, healthcare, et cetera, like that. But let's say I just wanna see all the, the students there. Okay, so there are 54,000 students. Now, one of the things you can look at is what are they doing? See that we have little badges here, this really tells you about the uh, contributions that the uh, that these people that the students are making, um, and uh, so um, gold uh, cups are about. Um, I think they have to contribute thirty or more materials. Silver is um, all right, and I'll I'll just pick one here, just just so you can see. So this person has submitted 11 materials, they've authored three, they've commented on this, and they've created 28 bookmark collections. And so bookmark collections, just to show this element is, this is where someone says, oh, uh, I, I wanna create a little shelf for myself. Um, here's Natural Science 106, right? And so, the student, um, Jessica Moishkin, um, has organized six materials for, her, I guess, taking her natural science 106 class, right? And again, you can say, who's Jessica? You know, what she's done. And because I know where is she from, I can say, who else is at Fresno? Um, what are other materials? and who else are, are in her discipline. Um, she's put in materials about uh, her skills and interests. So I'm looking at this, it looks like she's in the uh, teacher education program uh, in STEM, if I had to take a guess here. Uh, she, was, she was a student assistant. So that, you know, that's an example of a um, uh, student there. Uh, was that helpful, Robin? Okay, and remember, Anyone can join, right? Long, they, they basically need an email address. And, uh, and with an email address, um, they, they, they can join. And, and if you wanted to know, let me just go back, um, Robin, to the point of in the advanced search, if you wanna say, what are the students, um, if they've, um, you know, how many students created those bookmark collections? Okay, you want to take a guess? We had 54,000 altogether. I have no idea myself, so 
Um, I'll say, uh, I'll say 15,000. We'll see what, where we are. The circle is spinning. And this is the home network. There we go. Oh, no. So 4,000 people have, uh, 4,000 students have created uh, uh, their personal collection. So less than 10%. Uh, you know what, uh, what I'm curious, um, what would be interesting to say, how many people, how many of the students contributed materials into the collection? Right, you know, th there's something uh, in, in open education resources, open pedagogy is having students kind of contribute into the creation. So here we have 2000 students actually added materials into the collection. Okay. All right. Other questions? All right. We're coming to the end. I, I guess if there's no more, uh, give Kevin a break between the next one he's got to do and this one. Um, and I uh, just want to thank everyone uh, for participating today. I hope you got something useful. Um, I look forward to continually supporting, continue to support ABLE and, uh, and the fun things ahead for us all. Well, thank you so much, Jerry. Um, for those of you participants, I've already added the Open Educational Practices Portal and the Content Builder homepage to the gallery for week two of this ABLE virtual annual meeting. So you may go there and sign up and get your accounts and get started because I think uh, that's what everybody wants to do. But Jerry did bring up a good point. In just three minutes, we have another uh, event. This one will be a showcase by the ABLE Digital Ethics Task Force. And so they'll be talking about the standards that, uh, and principles that they've generated um, over the last year. And they will also be putting out a call for participation in year two because they only were able to get to half of the principles they wanted to write. It's so much to do. Uh, Jerry alluded to that, and he has his people in the background, but um, it's going to be um, a, a good time. So join us in two minutes. You will have to exit this room, go back to the ABLE website, and click the link to join that very last workshop slash showcase in week two. And until then, Tracy, are there any closing thoughts, any, any words of wisdom we have to share with our guests? Well, I just want to, again, thank Jerry so much for being here and, and showing us all these great things we get to play with and uh, really encourage all of you to think about creating your uh, teaching portfolios at a minimum so that we can start to share these practices among our community. And um, yeah, I can't wait to see more April stuff there. This was a true play shop. So thank you, Jerry, for taking that spirit to heart. And, uh, and I love the fact that your background, the wind is still blowing in Hawaii. So we know <laughs> that we're, uh, we're all in, in <laughs> it's a hurricane now, I see. Um, all right, everyone, I'll see you in just a minute. Thanks so much for coming, everyone. Thank you.